JKB back with another episode. Today I'm reviewing Shovel Knight Treasure Trove for the Nintendo Switch. Thank you to Yacht Club Games for sending over the review copy. If you've never played Shovel Knight and you own a Nintendo Switch, or if you want to pick this up on any other system, I'm reviewing it on the Switch. It's also available for pretty much everything else. This is Shovel Knight with its two DLC packs included. So if you've never played Shovel Knight, this is a very, very good time to pick it up because you're going to get the complete collection of Shovel Knight. And let me just say right off the bat, if this game was released in 1995, 6 or 7 in you know, the Super Nintendo, it would we'd be looking back at it saying like, wasn't that game just a masterpiece? It took elements of Mega Man, DuckTales, and just classic Nintendo side-scrolling games and just turned them into something so memorable and it's so simple. It's essentially about a knight that has a shovel and he's trying to rescue his princess. And this time around, you've got your two DLC packs, which are just in its their own rights are, are unbelievable. This is one of those games that the, the developers really understood what they wanted to do here and what they wanted to do was capture the nostalgia of playing a 16-bit game or even a Nintendo game, an 8-bit game, and put it into our generation to have sort of nods to classic franchises like Mega Man or, or uh, you know, DuckTales or anything like that. It really does nail it down. I think the team really spent a lot of time trying to understand what are the best elements that they can go about here. Like, what are the best elements that would really bring something forward to the audience that isn't just a rehash of old ideas put together. This feels like something that was made on the Super Nintendo and they just found it in a box right now and, oh yeah, here's that game, we should release it now. That is very hard to do. Do you know how many, like, 16-bit games, retro-style games are coming out now that are trying to do that? So the story is simplistic because it is based on a classic retro game. It's about saving the princess essentially or saving one of your one of your own knights. So Shield Knight is I guess Shovel Knight's girlfriend and you got to go around a map just like kind of like Super Mario 3 and go through missions. Now at the end of these missions there's mid bosses, there's final bosses just like you would see in something like Mega Man. You've got the same abilities that you would have in Mega Man. That are unlocked now of course you have so many so many weapons and tools and all sorts of things that i could go on and on and on and uh, on and on and on about here but i could tell you the level of depth is just ridiculous for a game that's so cheap you're gonna get so much fun out of it the unlockables are amazing and then that really goes back to the classic super nintendo days of just getting like a link to the past let me just use that example when you got like a new upgrade fire rod or ice rod you'd go out in the open world and you'd use the hell out of that same thing here you're gonna get an upgrade that might be a magical green ball that bounces around the level you'll be going back in the levels just to use that that's how much fun the tools are in this game or so i should say the weapons are in this game now you also can upgrade your magic so that's a big part of it when you use these tools you use your magic let me just say the music in this game is some of the best music I've ever heard in a classic retro retro style video game. The music is amazing, unbelievable. So whoever did that over the Yacht Club, amazing job on the music. The art design is spectacular. These are obviously people that have played classic games. I don't know if you guys know this, but when Shovel Knight came out originally, it was my game of the year. That's how good. I think this game is. It is still up to par. Now let me talk about the expansions. Without getting into detail here, there's other knights or other villains that you come across in the game and they've decided to kind of turn it into a multi-universe or, or a universe, essentially taking some of the bad guys and giving you a prequel and that's what one of the DLC is and it's just amazing to go back into this and now play as a different character but have different uh, you know abilities so instead of playing like Shovel Knight's classic sort of like Mega Man meets DuckTales these guys might be Mega Man meets some other classic game with different abilities that lets you do a double jump or do this sort of slash effect through anything on the level that has an X route or whatever you know as you go through this you'll start to see 
they've spent some serious time making sure that these DLC packs that come with it are just toss in there. Like, hey, here we go, let's do this. Now, another aspect I have to bring up is the Amiibo functionality in this game is amazing as well. It takes away all of the leveling up you would usually do in the game and moves it to the Amiibo. So how this works is as you go through the game, you level up your Amiibo itself and you'll be constantly putting it on the patent, scanning it if you want to save your data to this. It is cool to do it this way as well. However, I mean, it, it's like such a big difference between playing the normal game where you have to collect loot. So Shovel Knight uses his shovel to collect a lot of treasure, of course, and that treasure is used to buy those upgrades and those abilities. But when you use the Amiibo, those things are kind of locked away and you level up by just completing the game, I'm assuming. As I went through the game, more and more levels were on there and it was like, you unlock this, you unlock this, and you could switch those things out. So the Amiibo really just introduces a new way to play the game, period. Also, it does co-op. I mean, this is something that, of course, the Nintendo Switch needed. I mean, to have one and two players, but the Nintendo Switch needed Shovel Knight because Shovel Knight obviously is a big deal for Nintendo to allow them to have an amiibo But oh my goodness. This game has zero cons. I mean realistically You could say it's essentially a perfect package. Do I want to give it a 10 out of 10? Kind of I mean it is perfect in in its it design. I mean, it's it's really a good game the only negative I could come up with is I I mean, I'm kind of at a loss here. It's, I, it's, there, there is no negative. I mean, it's hard as hell. You have to be good at these retro games to get through this. It takes some of that Dark Souls, Demon Souls vibe where you lose your loot when you die and you have to go back through the mission and grab that loot to get that, those points back. That's amazing in, in its own right. The game really is spectacular and like i said back in the day I'm, I'm just gonna give this whole package the whole thing because there's no negatives to this i honestly can't think of one negative they've they, it's just i'm giving it a 10 out of 10. shovel knight is a must own wherever you can get it playstation 4 xbox 3ds and switch go out there and buy shovel knight right away it is a must own a must play for any retro gamers out there and it is the pinnacle of retro design i mean nothing comes close to this like maybe here and there you'll see 16-bit games that have been rehashed but this is like the pinnacle of that design these guys nailed it down and i'm super excited to hear that they want to take it into the mario 64 universe well not the universe but that game style on the next Shovel Knight. So a full 3D Shovel Knight. If, if these guys did this with the Super Nintendo version, oh my god, we might be in for something spectacular. So thank you so much for watching. Go pick it up. Hey, and by, by all means, this is my opinion. If you don't agree, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Nothing. You're going to do nothing. Because what are you going to do? Nothing. I love you guys. See you in the next episode of JKB.